which is that America is suffering, this is the headline, America is suffering from an epidemic of political bullying. And if you think about it, you can't really make bullies. It's not how their brains work. They're wired differently than average people. They have learned a strategy at some point in their, presumably in their childhood or maybe from their parents, um, or uh, you know, maybe it's just a survival strategy that they've learned. Uh, but they, you know, what they have learned is that you don't negotiate. You, you, you fight and you win, period. And, and bullies never stop. I mean, the, you know, the, this is uh, Bill Eddy, who is both a lawyer and a therapist, uh, wrote a column about this for Psychology Today. He said, bullies don't negotiate. They make demands, they make threats, and they fight for them. They generally lack the modern skills of win-wins. So don't think of their demands as a form of true negotiation. It's more like warfare. And you don't want to give in to that. So how do we deal with an epidemic of political bullying? I mean, we've got all, all kinds of political bullies. I mean, just all over our country, our landscape is littered with them. Uh, we have the January 6th bullies. You're seeing that played out in Congress right now. Oh, hey, let's, let's put a couple of Republicans on the committee to look into January 6th. Oh, we're going to punish them. Yeah. We've got the anti-mask bullies. Oh, you can't, you can't take away my freedom to be infected by a virus that will hijack all the cells in my body. That's freedom, really? Seriously? Uh, you've got the anti-vax bullies. Uh, you know, I, I reprinted part of an email I got from one today, you know, saying basically screw you and, and, uh, and the horse you rode in on. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, really? Come on, it's it. We have an entire health insurance industry that bullies us. No, we're not going to pay for that process. Oh, you went to the emergency room? No, no, you're going to get stuck with that. We've got bully banks who rip us off open lines of credit so that they can force you into credit cards that are paying 30% interest instead of 16% interest. We've got Wall Street bullies stealing everything that's not nailed down. You've got the anti-abortion bullies uh, harassing women who, wanna, who, who are trying to get an abortion or just, just even try to get birth control. We've got saying, oh, no, I don't have to get vaccinated. Oh, no, I don't have to pay my taxes. Oh, no, I don't have to, I mean, you know, fill in the blank, right? I don't have to make a cake for a gay couple. I, you know, whatever happened to society, we're all in this together. Steve Smith, or excuse me, Sean T. Smith wrote a book called Surviving Aggressive People. And in that book, he writes, bullies and predators test, prod, and scan for vulnerability. When they do, responding quickly is more important than responding perfectly. In other words, fighting back is imperative immediately. Otherwise, you lose. This was the great lesson of World War II. Never, Neville Chamberlain went over and thought he could negotiate with Adolf Hitler. Oh, yeah, we'll work something out. He just, you know, he's a reasonable guy. He just wants to, you know, uh, to greatness in the world. No, he wasn't a reasonable guy. He wanted to kill you know, everybody who wasn't a, a white Aryan and, and dominate not just Europe, but the entire world for a thousand years of peace. So Chamberlain came back and said, we have secured peace for our time. And, and Churchill was looking at him like, you think so, really? And, you know, that's what happens with bullies is you have to beat them. You have to de- or you have to marginalize them so you don't have to pay attention to them. Unless you, you know of a different, I mean, you know, have, have, do you have strategies to deal with bullies that have worked? I, you know, I, the, the billionaires started in the 1980s demanding that the top tax rate go from 74%. Reagan was like, yeah, I'm good with that. And a few Democrats even went along. Now, and, and see, they got away. And so then it was, oh, let's Lower the corporate tax rate from around 50% down to around 20%. Okay, they got away with that. Oh, let's lower the estate tax. Yep, they got away with that. And now, what's the average, you know, the top 25 richest people in America, how much, what was the average that they paid in income taxes last year? 3%. When you give in to bullies. And then, and, and then just to, to put a 
punctuation mark on this or the icing on the cake or whatever other terrible metaphor you want to use or cliche. The, the, the Democrats are negotiating with Republican bullies to try to come up with an infrastructure deal, a bipartisan infrastructure deal. Now, the Republicans have no intention of ever having a deal. They, they, they played this game with Barack Obama for a full year. Just, just you know, the whole rope-a-dope thing. They just strung him along for literally a whole, saying, well, if you just tweak this, we'll be happy. Oh, no, no, well, hey, we forgot about that. You got to tweak that, we'll be happy. Oh, you know, you can't do that. Oh, and, and he gave in and 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 voted for Obamacare. Zero. And they're doing the same damn thing with infrastructure, but back to the tax part of it. So the Democrats had, I mean, this, this bi, so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill, which is not going to happen, I guarantee you. The so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill, it's 800 bucks, $800 million over 10 years. That's like 80 million, 80, excuse me, $800 billion over 10 years. That's like $80 billion a year. And it turns out that rich tax cheats are costing the United States somewhere between 500 billion and one and a half trillion dollars a year. And then, I mean, this is according to the Internal Revenue Service. They're saying we should to audit these people ever since the Reagan revolution, every, every time Republicans take control of Congress and produce a new budget, they cut the budget for the IRS, for the inspectors, for the, for the auditors. So now the, you're more likely to be audited if you're running a small business and are claiming a home office deduction than if you're a billionaire who's hiding his money in the Caymans. So the Democrats come along for this whole infrastructure bill simply by throwing a couple hundred million bucks at the IRS to hire some new auditors to start forcing rich tax cheats to pay their damn taxes. We're not talking about increasing taxes. We're not talking about changing the law. We're just talking about enforcing the existing law. And these Republicans who are the first to be in line when it comes to, we need more cops to get control of these out of control black people and young people and you know, b b cities on, whatever. The same Republicans who are so gung-ho for law and order, oh, you wanna hire cops for the IRS? Oh, <laughs> no way. That's a deal breaker. Mitt Romney comes out, you know, <laughs> who went into the business of bullying, by the way. And, you know, it was basically hostile takeovers of companies, drain them dry. You know, it's, it's Mitt Romney came out and said, oh, uh, you know, we don't want to be funding the IRS like that. I mean, that, you know, you, you don't want to be people going through your papers and your taxes or seriously. We got the QAnon cultists in America saying that they shouldn't be uh, vaccinated. I mean, it's just, the political bullying seems to never stop. And if Joe Biden, frankly, wants to deal with these guys, he needs to take a lesson from previous presidents who, who took on the bullies. He needs, to, he, needs to, he needs to pull an LBJ or an FDR and, and just stand up to them, to them. There was, uh, you know, for example, FDR actually raised taxes. You know, when he came into office, ta top tax rate was 25%. Um, and when he left, it was 91%. <laughs> and, and this is FDR talking back to the bullies. A number of my friends who belong in the very high upper bracket suggested to me on several occasions of late that if I am reelected president, they will have to move to some other nations of high taxes here. Now, I will miss them very much. Come on. It's like, you know, Joe Biden. It's a, it's a, hey, you know, okay, you don't want to be vaccinated? See you later. Right. I mean, they're, they're, they're we, you know, the, the Democrats need to get a spine. They need to fight back. They need to be pointing out that these are just bullying tactics. And bullies generally are number one, lazy. And number two, when you fight back, 
when you kick a bully where it counts or punch him, punch him in the nose, they typically run. We got a bully problem in this problem, in this country.